time. Shame that we lost some people, but it cannot be helped. I'm sure they'll come back if they want to see some more games. Uh, we honestly, depends how long this series might be, but uh, we might kind of stop after this series. Uh, uh, we might uh, call it a day after the series. Again, we're never looking to do a long stream uh, today. As we have to the bottom left hand side, our right Terran player Maru, and to the top right hand side, our blue Terran time. Yeah, we're never looking to do a long stream today, just three or four hours, just so we have the consistency there. Um, tomorrow is sub night, Tuesday is the Wardy TV Arena, and hopefully Wednesday is the Wardy TV Invitational Qualifier, if I can find enough players for the actual Wardy TV Invitational, because so far, I have not had any luck at all trying to find the Wardy TV Invitational players. Like, I have not been able to find anybody. It's, um... It's a bit of a problem, honestly. It's a bit of a problem. You gonna be at sub night ads? You're gonna send us a replay to Cass? We've got a couple of replays so far. Hopefully we get a couple more tomorrow. Well, we'll probably, I mean, it doesn't matter if we don't get too many. We'll probably do a uh, couple hours of sub replays, and then we'll probably do a couple hours of sub games, and then probably in like an hour or so of marbles. And uh, something like that anyways. I don't even know when we're going to start tomorrow. I didn't even decide yet. Yay, yay, yay. Early DM TVT here. Two workers on each gas. So both players so far just mirroring each other. And they are going to be going into that factory, which will be led up with the two workers on each gas, not three. It'll be followed up by a uh, command center in the next few moments. So a couple of workers on each gas. Get into the CC after the factory. It's a very safe way to expand. It's a very, you know, it's just a very secure way to get set up and going. As we do have this SCV of Maru coming down at the right-hand side of the map to see just what is going on. So he's maybe going to hide a starport over here, in which case he has actually gone up to a third worker here, so isn't going, maybe going to expand like we thought he was. Time is, and there is the starport from Mario, so looked like he was doing the same as time is, but he went back in the gas. Mario's going to look to apply some pressure here, so Mario looking for some aggression in the early stages of this TVT. This Reaper from Maru pulling back down to the bottom left. Two Reapers out from time. And the CC building now on the front. And Maru also has two Reapers. Is going to be building the third Reaper while time will go into a reactor. So now Maru will of course have even more units to perhaps be aggressive with. And time has to be really careful moving across the map here. Because if he loses these units, the counterattack on the natural could be painful. Comboed with a Liberator into the main base at the same time. Now this could be a really painful couple of moments as we do see... Two Reapers and a Hellion taking the first shots. I mean, high ground, very good there. And Maru is going to go and chase down. He does have the speed of the Hellion to chase down the Reapers, and he will be able to hit the Reaper once, but obviously ledges give the Reapers a little bit of an advantage that the Hellion can't chase them up there, and so the Reapers should be able to get home. But it is still a better set of units here from Maru. He's on two Hellions with three Reapers against the two Reapers and two Hellions. And he got the extra shot off on one Hellion already, although now he will have to go up the high ground. And the Liberator going to be heading into the main in a moment. He's going to push up the high ground. The Reaper Grenades don't do a lot here. And Maru ends up with two Reapers and a Hellion versus one Hellion. And that is going to go the way of Maru quite substantially. So Maru just makes the dive up. And while time, not in quite a great position. Another Hellion shows up. So Maru has some great low ground control. A couple of Marines won't do much. The Siege Shank will. Oh, but I tell you what, there's absolutely no anti-air here. So the Liberator flying in. It's only going to be the two Marines. Okay, there's four Marines to get rid of this uh, Liberator. While Siege Shank sieges, the Liberator will just fly away until those Marines have disappeared. Second Liberator on the way out. As the CC on the low ground still taking some damage. Obviously, Time not able to mine from this right now. Not able to set up properly and continue building SCVs. And in the meantime, Maru is getting his own command center setting up on the natural expansion. Just long distance mining with those SCVs that are a few too many at the moment. The Liberator siege up came back in. I wasn't expecting it to be able to siege up again so quick. It's because the medevac loaded up the marines in the siege tank and went across the map to attack. So Mario seen that medevac probably said to himself, Oh, you know what? I reckon you're probably going to try and drop very soon. So I'll bring that liberator back in. And oh, now there's drop. What's that going to do? Cyclone locks onto the siege tank here. Lifts up into the medevac again now at least. And see if he's pulled in to help out with this because of the yeah, medevac healing. You have to be careful. Oh no, the Cyclone locked onto the medevac. Cyclone was blocked by SCVs, but it gets the kill of the siege tank inside. Oh, and time has still been losing mining time on the other side because of the Liberator. 
and he is having a nightmare. 18 SCVs to 28, and actually Maru's just going to go across the map. He knows that Time's not had enough income to really build much here. He knows also that Time has really been, uh, you know, losing units as well, and that Medivac, the tank, that's really painful. And so now Maru will attack across into the natural expansion in the next couple of moments. So what does Time have? A few Marines, and that's it. A Raven on the way. There's a Liberator Siege up in the corner. Sorry, he actually also has a Cyclone, but... Well, he definitely doesn't have as much as Maru does. So Maru straight into the natural. And well, Time, what do you do here? Probably get out of the game because it's not going to be pretty. Your natural's going to go down because the Cyclones are locked on. And he's going to type out GG. I mean, it's one of those situations where what else do you do? Maru just has so much. He's so far ahead. He's in a great position. And there's time. Thanks for the info, though. Do appreciate the uh, you guys keeping me up to date and working with me to help fix things. Top left hand side, up 1-0. Our right Terran player here on Stasis is Maru. Playing against the blue Terran on the top right hand side, Time. Okay, so game two of this. Best of three. Maru up 1-0, but, well. I mean, Ty, you know, Time has honestly been one of the more impressive non-Korean players in the last little while. I mean, he does a lot better than I think a lot of people will give him credit for. I mean, Randa Ford, WCS Montreal, finally sort of was his time to shine. No pun intended. I mean, finally was able to show us, you know, he can, perf you know, perform well. He made it into Code S last year. You know, he's definitely one of these uh, non-Korean players that should, uh, you know, you guys should keep your eyes on. Underrated because he comes from China, but he's been living a lot in the Korean team house, and he's been practicing hard, so definitely one to watch out for. So yeah, time's time's definitely a player to keep your eyes on going into 2019. Excited to see what he can do this year in WCS Winter and the other WCS events we're probably going to have, and uh, all of that good stuff as we do see the factory starting up from both of the players once again here. Early game on Stasis, so probably looking towards. I, I would imagine still the, the you know the defensive expansion. You know you get the factory up and you just expand very safely. You can see Amaru has a little less gas mining, so it definitely feels though like he's probably more towards that this time than he was last time when he did still add on the starport. I suppose we shall see here, very very soon with the SCV of Maru pulling back away to the left hand side of the map. And meanwhile. Well, again, factories finishing up and so on. It's going to be seen that uh, Reaper here just going to patrol back and forth. The Helene on its way. SCV going to be finishing up. And early game TVT is just getting going. We're here on Stasis, which is, you know, as the map goes, it's one of these uh, larger maps. It's definitely a map that can get split very easily between the players. So like, you know, three versus three base, four versus four, up to five. And then, you know, in the end, it's like six bases versus six. You're fighting over this watchtower, you're fighting over this bottom side 7th base of your own. The 15th base on the, uh, sorry, the 13th base on the map that is absolutely essential if the map goes split map. If one player mines from there and the other doesn't, it can become a real problem. So, that has definitely been a point of contention. But it's just because these pathways are so easily defended, they're all very choked up. You don't really want to come around the bottom. So it's very difficult to move against your opponent as long as they have, you know, especially if there's tanks and so on in play. This time's going to hop up to the high ground here this time and... Well, he will still lose this fight. Still not going so great for him, these uh, early game Reaper Hellion engagements. So this time he tried to be the aggressor, but I mean, you're hopping up into a you know, attack. That's even worse than just running up a ramp because the hop up takes a little while longer than just running up a ramp. So yeah, that was never going to work out. And the Hellion was in a good shot as well to line up some splash damage. So that obviously didn't exactly help out either. Siege tank coming in. Excuse me. Siege tank coming in on each side of the map as an SCV going you know, to come in and repair up that Hellion. Orbital Command just morphing in on the natural expansion of both players. And again, there's been pretty similar builds in that regard. Much faster starport out of time. That's because Maru, we saw him having that one less worker on gas there for a while. That's probably the difference in the starport timing is all. And as we see that starport from Maru straight to attack lab. Whereas it is time with the Medivac. So again, looking for aggressive options perhaps. Cyclone and Hellion from Mario arrive on the natural and actually get rid of a bunch of Marines. 
Well, tank and marines will still load up and go across to see what can be done. Viking on the way from each player now as well, but that's really good for Maru because it means he has consistent damage output onto that medevac. Oh, this, this tank and a few marines here from uh, Maru going to press in. I mean, this tank's going to try and siege up. I think the most hopeful siege I've ever seen in a while. Yeah, he trades off like a tank for three marines. It's just really not worth it. And that uh, drop from time just really didn't do much. I don't know what you hope for, though, with that drop. Like, are you just hoping there's nothing there? Like, what what could there be that that's good against? And obviously, it's good against something. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. I'm just trying to think. Maybe if, like, the Cyclone's on the map or so. Maybe if he's... Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's, like, if it's out of position, then the tank actually can get quite a lot done if it sieges up before units come in. Well, this is nice from time. He's going to get the Cyclone there. He does lose the Vikings, but gets the Cyclone. Lose the Medivac then just afterwards as well. These couple of tanks from Maru. If you want to be pulling back, he's not going to come in yet. This time does get his third CC on the way. But you can see the difference in confidence between the players. Maru throws down that third command center straight away on the third base. So he's already putting that down in location. Whereas the third base of time drops in on the natural. So because Maru has a bit of map control, he feels good to place that down in position in the third base of time here. Obviously, that just builds here and then we'll float over, but it is better for not having to float. So, Maru definitely taking a smaller advantage. Stem pack starts from Maru. So, we're going to be confirming bio play from him and from time actually. There's two extra barracks coming up over in the main base. Time won't start his stem just yet. Is investing into a secondary raven, so. One single Raven for Maori, going to be two from time. Slight differences there at the moment. And then there's that orbital Morven in on the natural expansion. Cyclone picks off a Marine. And just sits in that little line of sight blocker to try and just get a little bit of a heads up. Obviously Maru actually just sees just here in the center. And with the high ground units, oh, that Cyclone pulled away really quickly. Oh no, I think he took the shot and it actually wandered away. When he took the shot from one Siege Shank. Oh, and Tiffany's Matrix on the high ground, but there's Matrix is able, available from time. Oh, he drops down the auto turrets. Well, I mean, he's going to lose his siege chunks still, though. The auto turrets don't end up doing much. And Maru is going to be able to probably keep pressing forward, so although he has no Raven energy, he doesn't have much to see on the high ground. With SCVs, will repair up that tank. So Maru sets up what I would consider a bit of a soft contain, and he actually is going to unsiege and pull away. Still good fights from Maru, still putting him into a good position. Time just uh, trying to find a way to hold this off as we do see another few marines and tanks from Maru setting up on the left side. And uh, yeah, a couple more reactors from time on the way up in the main base. So all the racks coming through here. One more upgrade from Maru finishing up ahead of time as well. Everything from Maru is just a little bit ahead, right? Upgrade timing, stim pack timing. I mean, look at the unit count. He's up by 60 marines to 7. He's got 6 tanks to 2. He won that fight, killing off tanks while losing nothing. I mean, the only thing he doesn't have an advantage on is there's 2 Vikings, 2 Ravens at, but that's because he's committed into medevacs instead. So he has got those medevacs for his army to heal up, rather than looking for the air control, which is what the Vikings and the Ravens give you. It's just two very different ways of approaching the game. So this army coming in, and we are going to be seeing a marine picked off there right away. Taking the watchtower there for a moment or so. I'm just going to be seeing this army continuing across over to the far right hand side. So, Mary with a big push here, and the question will be can time hold this off? I mean, he still has the double ravens, so you got to remember those interference made because it can be very important. Vikings coming down the right side as a scan comes down from time. Sees Maru backing away just a little bit. What's up, I am Rave coming in with a new subscription. Thank you so much for subscribing. Got some uh, love in the chat from I am Rave. Thank you so much. Plus one vehicle playing, starting up from Maru as we do see these last few units pulling in towards the center, going to take that watchtower. Again, the Vikings and the Ravens gathering up from time, and just going to be seeing those hanging out. And I do see this army of Maru 
coming back over to the right. So I'm wanting to press in towards that third base, perhaps here in the next few moments. Combat shield starting up from time. Does Mario already have combat shields? He does. Oh, that's actually kind of huge if Mario is able to take a fight having combat shields versus no combat shields. Comes in, picks off a marine as Mario does take position on the right hand side here. So, well, maybe looking for a position to drop. He does put the tanks very far forwards. And he will be in range of that third base. So, a couple of SCPs going down. Missile turret goes down as well. Oh, nice interference. Matrix is going down, and those uh, tanks going to have to pull away. And those tanks coming along through the bottom side of the third. Means and tanks gathering up here from Mario on the bottom right. A couple of star pops being added in here. So Mario and the star just really vying for that air control himself as well. So again, that's set to go as the Marines coming in. Grabs a couple of Marines on the watchtower. And Mario coming in through the top side. A few Marines simming in. Going to take that top side watchtower. Again, on the bottom, we do see the Marines and the tanks. And Mario just... He's kind of just got these two different armies. And it just gives him opportunities to kind of try and poke and find an opening where time is not defending properly. Mario has a 4th base up, a 5th base establishing on the gold. You can just see all of the advantages that are slowly starting to uh, flood in here. Command Center pulls back towards the 3rd base. Tanks from time will in siege. Repositioning a little bit, Marines gathering up and... Oh, just going to see again the tanks firing away. Oh, the Marines are kind of really having a bit of a tough time. Again, players scanning on both sides. Tanks dropping down over the right. And this tank line is pretty dangerous. It means that time just can't get a fourth base, though. So this contain from Mario is essentially stopping time taking another base. While he mines from five bases of his own, I mean, this is exactly the counter, though, from time. Get across the map and drop. You know, punish Mario for having you know, so many units committed to your side of the map. Apparently Mario's figured it out though, he's loaded up medivacs of his own to pull around. That or, I actually thought maybe he was pulling units home, he's actually going to maybe drop himself. Scans that natural, sees his medivacs there, the Vikings coming over, and that is what time has. He has got 10 Vikings and the two Ravens still, so still has the air control, even Liberators out now to push back a siege tank line. Mario's building up Vikings of his own though, and as those Marines absolutely massacre the attempt of a drop into the natural. So, Mario defends those medivacs coming home, and they turn out to be pretty good. In the end, just again going to be seeing those tanks from time sieging up here. They're going to siege again and just going to be seeing time continuing to press forwards. And see the command center dropping down on the bottom right and also just going to be seeing Maru coming around into the middle, man. All the way over to this uh, central position. Bottom left command center comes in as well. A few ravens and vikings hanging out in the center. And we still have this army of Maru. Looking to see what's going to happen. Bottom side of the map. Another command center taken. That's the seventh base of Maru. On the way up in time. Well, he's fought his way through to a fourth base. But I don't really think he's going to be able to get uh, something more from there. As you see the marines, the tanks continue to siege up. Marines here from Maru. Trying to press forward. He's actually going to load up and uh, drop onto the natural weather. He might be able to kill Siege Chang actually. So nothing else in range. So comes in. Going to go for a sensor tower too. The sensor tower is nice. It's 100 gas that obviously has a lot of value to it. And he kills a Liberator. How does Mario do so much with like five Marines? That is insane. A tank, a Liberator, and a sensor tower. That is like, what, like 375 gas for five Marines? Never mind the mineral cost. So I'm going to try and come around the bottom side. So Mario set up a very aggressive sensor tower. This is pretty much the only pathway that can actually be used by time that Mario doesn't see. So you will at least get some marines across the map. Whether you can do something with that remains to be seen. I mean, Mario just continued to build a ton of command centers here as he goes into plus three armor, plating upgrades, new steel frame. Mm, these marines probably step in and kill the command center. It's like. Well, great, but do you really do a, you know, what does that mean? 
You kill one CC out of the many that Maru has. Maru cancels these two CCs instantly. I mean, okay, I mean, you're gonna get another Robo. But this is 30 plus Marines. And if these 30 Marines now die, well, they wasn't worth the orbitals that you've killed. Pressing in here right away, Maru has the attack upgrade number three as well. So he actually has better upgrades too on top of everything else. The missile turret line here makes it very difficult for time to move forwards. He's trying to use his air control to his advantage. Again, another couple of Ravens out, couple more Vikings on the way as well. The break gets picked off. And then his own Liberator from Maru sieges up and gets a couple of shots on tanks. And Maru just has this air army that he's been building up over time. He saw those extra star ports coming in a while ago. And this has been what they're for, so you can fight this. Here we go. A big fight in. Anti armor missiles will drop down all over the place. All the turrets dropping down from time as well. Who has those extra ravens? Some interference matrixes as well. Who actually wins this fight in the sky? It's pretty close. I think Maru does in the end as the Vikings come out of the state of the interference matrix. Maru does just about win out, but really only just a couple of reinforcements coming in. Might turn this around. Oh my god, the anti armor missile allowed for that kill that otherwise I think the Viking would have survived with one hit left on it. The Brits continue to come over. Tanks from Maru will siege up yet again. And still this bioforce of uh, time coming around the bottom side. Going to press across, I mean, trying to find openers, but this is the issue of stasis. If your opponent is controlling the map well, then your opponent is not going to let you make any progress on the map at all. Like, you are not going to be able to break through, and it just gets to a point where you are being contained, and you kind of just fight to take your own bases. But that's the issue of the fact that Maru has this bottom base, and you don't. And you can never take that bottom base for yourself, so Maru will just outmine you. And the fact Mary's also trading like four and a half thousand resources better as well. That also helps. Let me see the uh, Liberator coming in again. Interference Matrix coming down. Grabbing that Siege Tank. There's another Liberator coming in too. Sieging up on top of those tanks. Marine's going to keep on stimming in and they are going to be able to get rid of the rest of this. I mean, Maru just has so much as well at points here that I just think, what are you really expecting? anti armor missiles coming in all over these armies. Maru has lost a fair amount in fairness, but then he's got a huge bank, so he can rebuild so easily. Libra is just sat here picking off siege tanks. Time is dropping further and further behind. So I'm going to try and take the fight again as the Vikings of Maru had anti armor on them. That might be enough for a start. Times is going to type GG. He knows whatever happens here, he's not winning this game in the end. And Maru will take it 2-0.